share a few things with you that we are doing as our green initiatives. Just to begin by telling you the kind of agencies that we are collaborating with. So for us, NEA, looking at PUB, and the National Environment Council. These have been critical partners for us. <coughs> Restroom Association is another organization that we've been working very, very closely with. Very lately, our students have gone through the journey of WWF, and we are on that track for looking at global issues in terms of sustainability. Some acknowledgement, acknowledgements that we've got over a period of time, we got the Sustained Lotus Award, and this is our commitment where our students have shown and proved that they are the ones who are supposed to actually sustain this entire universe. And the DAISY Award is a fact that we don't need this only for the older children. Mm. These are our kindergarten children actually who are participating and who are real contributors in their effort to saving this planet. Three areas that are very critical for us, one is water, one is our green footprints, and one is to ensure that whatever happens in Singapore in terms of sustainability, we are part of that. For our students, it is not only doing internal projects, but more advocacy. So we've spent a lot of time in our neighborhood sharing this message. Looking at the next one, how do we conserve electricity? So we have a smart campus, yes, but at the same time, we have children who are looking at solar panels, tracking the electricity consumption and how it can be reduced. Another big problem for us is e-waste. So we've instilled in our children that we should be actually disposing it in the yes. right way. Some of the green things, we had an organic garden. Our East Coast campus continues with the organic garden. And the fact that the produce of that goes into a cooperative for sale for the neighbors and for the students. We are part of the SC, uh, Singapore National Cooperative Federation. Oh, okay. And we have a cooperative at our school too. Quite right, good. I'm glad yeah. you're part of it. <laughs> All, oh, yes. And in fact, they've supported the students a lot in setting up a cooperative for us. All the programs that happen in Singapore, we are part of that. Mm. So be it you know, the NEA workshop. I think most important is the best practice that we learn and our students share. <coughs> I think Smart Campus, we've spoken about so much. I actually invite you to quickly have a look at some of the projects. And there's one special one, this lab, this space is created, where our young ones come together, they brainstorm, and they're looking at real world problems. You'll have one presentation here which actually shows you how they are trying to address a real world problem. Great. I'll invite you to please come this way. Children, come. <coughs> come. Children, come. come. So we, because of shortage of time, we've said they won't stand and explain. If there's any question, you can ask them and they'll. Just tell me, it's okay. Hydroponics. 30 you seconds. Want to? 30 seconds. Uh, hydroponics. Okay, uh, so today we have something called hydroponics. So hydroponics is basically a way of um, growing plants without the use of soil. Yes. So um, over here, you just need basically a reservoir, <coughs> a, wa a water to be filled inside, and you just need some seeds to grow the plants. Now, usually people use soil to grow plants as it absorbs nutrients from the, air, from, uh, the soil, water, and use sunlight. But over here, I have two uh, special nutrients, which are made up of many different elements, such as phosphorus, potassium, magnesium, etc. It can be made in the chemistry lab also with the right combination um, of the elements. And this is an air pump. It can be found usually in the fish aquariums, you put inside to oxygenate the water. But as you know, um, in water, there's only a bit of dissolved oxygen, and all the plants will not be able to um, use it. So over here, we have something which is known as an air stone. It's yeah. inside the water. Yes. So when we combine, when we when I connect this tube with the air pump to the air stone, it, this is basically oxygen all condensed into one stone. So when I connect it, it just provides so much oxygen that I'll be able to supercharge the growth. Excellent. There are many types of hydroponics here in Singapore. I myself learned one from behind in Pungol itself. Ah, <laughs> do, you, do you need a summer job? <laughs> If you need a summer job, make sure we make one for him and he'll go find for us. Excellent. So we'll take you this side. Yeah. Very good. Thank you, Shaykh. Yeah. Uh, what is this? Okay. Compare about waste, waste this recycling. This is about the recycling of plastics, metal, and glass. Ah. So basically, what happens is that when all the waste has been collected, it's unloaded onto this conveyor belt. 
So this crane it technically sorts the metal from it, whereas uh, plastics and glass are hand-picked. And then all that is sent to the re respective recycling units. Yeah. So basically in your glass recycling unit, it's uh, the glass is separated according to its color. Then the contaminants are removed from it using uh, laser sorters, suction, magnets, etc. This is then heated up to around 1500 degrees. This mixture is called the collet. Okay, and then uh, after it's been heated, it's uh, poured into molds to make new glass products <coughs> like mirrors, highway making beads, etc. Have you made an operating model? Yeah, this is what lights. This is what this is theoretical. Yeah. When you grow older, maybe you can make a real recycling. Yeah. That's one word. Yeah. <laughs> just take you yeah. through this one. Yeah. This Excellent. is a working model. Oh, this is beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very good farming. Very also, you're not only a dancer, you're a scientist. <laughs> yeah. 30 seconds. <laughs> okay. A model is a combination of vertical farming, organic farming, yeah. and rainwater harvesting. It is called the eco home. So, when, uh, when it rains, the water gets collected in this tank here. Through a network of pipes, the water gets transported to the vertical gardens. In the end, it's stored in the storage tank. In case of heavy rains, it's stored in an underground tank. Wow. So, the water from the storage tank is used to water the organic garden. So, we reuse the wa rainwater for non portable purposes. Come, pour it in. <laughs> <laughs> so, you need to contact Ura. <laughs> That's the end of that's the underground tank. This is yeah. the simulated underground tank. Oh, this one. This one. That's, that's the story. As you can see, the water uh, is yeah. it's getting flowing through this side. side. And this side also. It's getting collected there. And then it will flow through ah. this side. So this is only excess water. The rest is, of course... Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's getting the water. water. It's getting the water. Oh. Oh. Spillage, spillage. <laughs> ah, it's okay. This is you see, mm. faith, having uh, challenges like this, part of the learning yes. process to success. In a good school, especially, the kids must learn how to fail. Yes. Otherwise, you'll just be perfectionist and you'll be, in the long term, not healthy. So learn to improve your design, yeah? yeah? All right. So in the real life world, if this is implemented, there might be acid rain. So we have come up with the idea of purifiers near it. the tanks so that it can be purified and at least used for non-portable purposes. Can I suggest to the principal, sure. go with a viewer, go see the big storage tank, prevent flooding <laughs> in the Botanic yeah. Gardens yes. area. That, that is a real five Olympic size, five story pool to prevent flooding, given the excessive, excessive rain we get yeah, today. Yeah. I think we'll then it'll be a, a real learning for them. Surely. Okay, we have a small yeah. example downstairs, yeah. Yeah. below the car park, we have a rainwater retention tank yeah. to Excellent. collect all the products. Mine is also in my water, based on aluminum can. This is a factory. Yes. Well it starts off with this recycling bins. Yeah. You find all around our school with the labels paper, plastic, metal yeah. cans. So our truck here will come and take us to a factory, as you may see here. Sometimes it malfunctions. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. No worries. Moving forward, okay. the conveyor belt will take this through a separating process where people take out things that shouldn't be there. Okay. For example, someone may be irresponsible or may not notice by mistake that they put paper in the can section, which should not happen. So that is taken out. Once it stops, five seconds later, it goes through a smelting process where it's burnt down to make new goods like iron ingots, chocolate wrappings, and cans. That leads you to the did you know fact that perhaps if you'd seen a can yesterday in a marketplace, it'll take just less than seven weeks for it to be recycled and reused. By doing this, we can make effective use of our resources and live in a sustainable manner. So that's the end of my presentation. Excellent. If you have any questions, very please good. let me know. Yeah, very good. Excellent. Thanks, sir. Good morning, sir. Hi there. So this is hydroponics as well. As you have heard before, it's agriculture without the use of soil and just water. In this case, um, I've used the WIC system. WIC system means there's no moving parts um, used in the hydroponics way method. So in these four plastic containers, I've put cotton threads in which they've connected to the bottom of the pipe. And the container here stores excess water and um, helps recirculate water throughout the whole model. Whereas here, it's the cracky system where roots have direct access to the water stored. Yeah. Here, it's called the reservoir. And a hydroponics is such a method where about 90% of the water is used efficiently. And this reduces wastage of water and, um, and also the growth rate of the crops is about 25% faster and you get a bigger yield. 
Excellent. So next time when you grow up, make sure you get into this business. <laughs> we Wait, have quite a few farms. 30 seconds. Yeah. Yeah. Quick knowledge, sir. This is basically a renewable a way of producing light. This converts mechanical energy into electrical energy. So this is renewable as unlike... Uh, yes, go ahead. The renewable as unlike the greenhouse gases do not pollute the environment and unlike dams, it won't chill over time. So mm. it will be renewable and you can use this to grow light in your houses and as many people can't afford to uh, transparent buildings and apart from that their balconies may be a little bit compact so they can do this and the plants can also photosynthesize in the night <coughs> hence ensuring faster and better growth of plants. There's another application, it's being implemented in the US. Um, by a man named Manoj Bhargava. He made a machine which if you pedal for one hour, like on a cycle, then you get electricity for 24 hours. So this is like killing two birds with one stone. Yeah. Just <laughs> exercise as well as electricity. Can I suggest you do three birds with one stone? <laughs> <laughs> so you put five bicycles here, you get your seniors who are training for IPPT <laughs> to do that, and then you generate electricity as well. Right? Yeah. A real life project. <laughs> well done. We have one last um, project yes. here. Hi there. Come. Some water. Oh, sorry. Good Some water in. Yeah. Good morning, sir. Uh, my name is Pratyush Bansal and Hi. my name is Eka Singh Gulati. Hi. Today it's our privilege to give you a demonstration okay. of this model. This is a prototype of the self-watering plant. This device helps plant lovers ensure that their plants are watered even in their absence. This idea came to us when we realized that most people face the problem of how to water their plants when they are away. This is an effective way to solve the problem. It is also important within Singapore's context that <coughs> water is a precious commodity yes. and emphasis nowadays is on going green. Our device also ensures that there is less wastage of water and more conservation of this natural resource. Our device also encourages people to plant saplings in their home gardens. The objectives of our prototype are threefold. Yes. It helps to save water, it increases the green footprint and reduces the carbon footprint, and encourages the three R's, reduce, reuse, and recycle. In addition, it also allows the owner to enjoy a carefree vacation as the plants will be watered automatically. This device makes sure that the plants are not overwatered, therefore eliminating <coughs> any sort of wastage. Mm. We are using a two liter water container, okay. a moisture sensor which is placed inside the soil, okay. a circuit board which is inside this box over here, okay. a water pump motor which is inside the tank, okay. uh, a liquid crystal display, okay. jumper cables and a power cable. Okay. We, uh, the light sensor and LED lamp, which are not here currently, <coughs> are additional features which are optional. Okay. Let us now show you the working of this device. Excellent. Come. The moisture sensor placed in the soil detects the moisture readings of the soil. This soil is currently moist, whereas this is dry. So when we put it into this, you can see that the water oh. it starts pumping water over here. And then once the soil, once the soil has become moist, you can see that it's not stopped. Pumping. Ah, wonderful. The LCD over here displays the date and time the plant was last watered. Mm. It also displays the current date. It also displays the current date and time. <coughs> LW on the LCD stands for last watered. The entire prototype costs us thirteen dollars to make. Wow. We also had conducted a survey which had eighty-one participants. Yep. More than fifty percent of the participants were willing to pay at least twenty dollars or more for this prototype. We hope that our model will be successful as 90% of the people do not use any such self watering device. Yep. We think that our model will be useful for the people yep. as 64% of the people said that their plants have died at least one to two times yep. while they've gone for a vacation. So do you have uh, scouts in your school? <coughs> are they scouts? No. Oh no. Because if they are scouts, I will get you to go to my garden and do this for me. <laughs> <laughs> I think you like do that anyway. <laughs> In the Good future, job. we also plan to replace yeah. our current circuit board with a Wi-Fi enabled one, a GSM module and a SIM card, right. which will send a notification <laughs> to the owner. At excellent. Water your school field. <laughs> <laughs> Give a proposal that your principal cannot refuse. <laughs> and then you start entrepreneurial yeah. uh, training yeah. even in uh, well, Actually, in our second school, we have boot camps which yeah. train students to innovate and market yeah. their ideas. Excellent. Yeah. We hope you enjoyed our presentation and would like Very to receive much so. your feedback.
very very much so. Scale it and start charging your school <laughs> for innovation see, right? and uh, way more of your school fees. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good idea. Uh, entrepreneur. Excellent. All right. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you. Excellent. Standing. Very, very, very good. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Time to take a picture again. No, I still want to get that. Hi there. Good morning. We're going to detour a bit to your room. Yes. No. I remember this uh, King Arthur Circle. Yes. <laughs> this is this is the Council of Wise Men, hopefully. <laughs> I came here as I think exactly in this place. Yes. Great. One more time. One year old. Yes. Few months only. Few months only. Yeah. Wow. So that's that's our, uh, time flight. Any day, any day. Time flight. Good. <laughs> so it's well utilized. Yeah. 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 Yeah, let me uh, so, uh, the school, yes. so is it going on live? Uh, so they are recording. They record okay. Um, so welcome to the ICU yeah, station. Sorry, sorry. So she is the one who leads that program. Excellent. Yeah. Ah, and my interviewers. And yes, we yes. must tell you today is World Radio Day, and we are yeah. such a pleasure to have you here. Hi, good to see you. Hi. Our students have a few questions for you. Okay. Am I interviewing you or are you interviewing me? <laughs> okay, I'm ready when you are. Good morning, sir. My name is Sanshay and I'm from class 7. And my question to you is, we have a well-equipped radio studio here and a TV studio right next door. Yes. Students are learning to become radio jockeys and TV presenters right from school level. How do you think such skills will help us in the future? Well, I think these are wonderful, holistic uh, learning opportunities. Learning is really uh, in the 21st century, not just in the classroom, but beyond the classroom. These skills will lend our students, like you, the confidence to express your ideas, to pursue your interests, and in terms of the generic ability to synthesize across different subjects, this is a great opportunity for all of you. So make use of it. It is not just about books, it's about enjoying what you do. And I'm sure the three of you must enjoy this very much. So change your passion. There's learning beyond the classroom. And being DJs, you have a voice, you have influence with your fellow students. Thank you, sir. Good morning, sir. My name is Isaac from class seven. And my question to you is, what is your idea of holistic education and in what ways does holistic education make us better human beings? Well, holistic education in the Chinese ideation, there are five aspects. De zi, qi, ting, ti, mei. It has encompassed the intellect, the body, the social, the values, all aspects of it. So it is not just the training of the mind in education, but also the values that drive us. This, I think, would be the most important combination that the modern school system must imbue in our kids. The skills necessary, of course, to meet the challenges of today's society, but importantly, the values. When one succeeds, how do you take care of your family, the society, and your respective countries as well? So that wherever you go, you're not just doing it for yourself, but for the people around you as well. Ultimately, that must be what drives us, isn't it? Yeah? Thank you, sir. Okay. Um, and I'd just like to ask a question. Um, in your personal experiences, what do you believe has been the best part of national service? And uh, if so, what do you wish to impart to our students? Well, I think the best part of national service uh, a combination of at least three things. One, the sense of duty for a young man to know that there is something beyond yourself, serving your country, ensuring that 
you have a part to play in the security of our country and caring for fellow citizens. So the sense of duty is very, very important. Forging teamwork in an environment where many of our young today are not familiar with, going into a military life, understanding some of the hardships before you can enjoy the wonderful offerings of modern society, knowing that we have to pay a certain price of duty to country, very important. And the last part, the personal discipline that anchors you well for life. You heard your seniors coming back to your school to talk about the NS experience. So at the personal level, personal discipline, the forging of teamwork, and when you collect all this in totality, sense of duty to country. All these are very important, uh, explicit and tacit learning in the journey of uh, a young Singaporean male. And if you bring it back to your families, if you talk to your uh, mummies and sisters, help them to understand, help them and get them to support you, just as uh, many mothers, sisters have supported generation of Singaporean males in NS. Yeah? All right. Yeah. Great. Okay, so uh, my second question to you is, uh, this uh, studio is one of the nearly 50 other skill-based studios in our campus. Yes. The idea is to hone our talents and give us an edge over competition. Do you think we should give adequate attention to such talents alongside academics and sports? Of course, certainly. It goes back to the idea of holistic education. The issues are not just the subjects themselves you learn in the classroom, but importantly, the application into real-life skills. That is the full cycle of learning, not just the ability to take exams and score good grades. Ultimately, it must be an application into life, into how we live our lives. That is critical. Yes? Thank you, sir. Um, so my second question to you is, do you think our students will benefit in our future career by pursuing such unique skills at school level? What skills? Like becoming radio jockeys and the IT programming of QBasic? I think so. I think so. Some of you will have the things you do in school now will have direct relevance. And maybe some of you may not pursue careers in these aspects, but you have dire indirect benefits of projection of confidence, understanding widely, reading widely and understanding diverse topics and the ability to synthesize into clear ideas that you have only 30 seconds on radio now to get the attention of your fellow classmates. All these are wonderful skills. If you choose to be a radio DJ, direct relevance. If you choose to be a sales manager or businessman in the future, you can do your sales pitch clearly, concisely, convincingly. All these are wonderful skills. Thank you, sir. Yes. I forgot to mention, um, I'm Mark Hush and I'm from IB Year 1A. Uh, yes. And that means I'm, I'm 16 years old and I'm going to join NS at, uh, roughly in about two years. Yeah. Uh, but I was about to mention, uh, we've had hundreds of students from GIS um, enter national service and um, uh, GIS has even received an award um, for a Total Defence Award from the Ministry of Defence. Um, and in that regard, I'd just like to ask you, uh, in what way do you believe students can contribute to national service in terms of... Students, yeah. young students. Mm -hmm. Well, support your big brothers, support your friends that are going to NS. Because the transition to military life is not a straightforward one. So see how we can give them moral support and encouragement. Yeah? In the meantime, get yourselves fit so that you can meet up with the military rigor. And when you are prepared physically, well, things will flow easier when you enter military service in NS. Thank you for your uh, sister. Uh, it's really very honor to have you here. Thank you. Thank you very much. All the very best to all of you. Can we have a group photo? Yes. <laughs>